Uh, thanks, Gerald. Um, we have advertised the for sale, as I'm sure you know, um, but we've also used the media, uh, Sky Sports, uh, BBC Midlands, ITV Midlands, a press conference, the newspapers, to let everybody know that Port Vale is available and for sale. That has generated a significant amount of interest. Uh, we've put together a sales prospectus for those who've signed confidentiality agreements. Uh, we've sent out 14 of those to 14 apparently interested parties. Of those 14, six have spent quite a lot of time with us or at the club, with their accountants, with their lawyers, going through the numbers, doing some due diligence, and appear to be serious parties. Two of those we announced at the press conference, being IPP and Mo Chowdhury. Neither of those have yet submitted a bid, uh, but we've been talking to Mo's solicitor this afternoon, and uh, he's pretty clear that Mo Chowdhury will be putting in a bid before the deadline. We're not quite sure about IPP. I think IPP were frankly surprised at the level of interest, at the hits on their website, the amount of management and marketing time it was taking to respond to all of the interest after they announced that, uh, that they were keen to come in. Um, so I don't know whether they're going to, to bid or not. <laughs> Does she want to make an offer? <laughs> <laughs> I do hope not. <laughs> um, now we've also had uh, three bids in writing already. Um, none of those bidders want me to go public on who they are at this stage. They are all of amounts that I believe to be worthy of consideration. Um, just for the avoidance of doubt, I'm, I don't believe any of those parties have anything to do with any former director of the club. Uh, so to, to pick up on Martin's points earlier, as far as we know, we're not negotiating with any party who's previously been involved with the club in any capacity. Um, so we may have uh, six bids by the time we close the bidding. Um, I'm pretty confident we'll have four or five. We've indicated to the, these parties, uh, and just put it out publicly now in case anybody else wants to come in, that we're looking to close the bidding uh, at 12 noon on Monday. We will then uh, discuss amongst the three administrators and with Stoke City Council the bids that are on the table uh, and decide which our preferred bidder is. We then, as you know, have to convene a creditors meeting that Gerald will talk about later on. But I just wanted you to know where we're up to at the moment. Tonight isn't about some great scoop. We're not uh, intending to say that we've got a firm preferred bidder. We haven't. Uh, until all of the offers are in, it would be quite inappropriate to, to say that. But I am as confident as I can be, as I said on day one, that we will find a bidder that will buy this football club. So that, that's the good news. Now, the other thing that's been raised with us by a number of people uh, is uh, what had happened before we were appointed. And concerns have been made to us regarding the issue of the half million pounds of shares, were they paid for or not. Um, certain monies that appear to have been paid out by the club uh, what we call in insolvency parlance antecedent transactions. Um, we've recovered from the company's solicitors the records in their possession and Port Wales former solicitors uh, have been very cooperative and passed to our solicitors uh, with some commentary uh, all of the records that they have. Now those matters are ongoing and I, I'm not going to answer specific questions if anyone asks, has there been any fraud, have the shares been paid for, have there been antecedent transactions, fraudulent trading, wrongful trading, misfeasance, whatever. I just ask you to take our word that we are going to be investigating that. Inevitably, that may uh, involve some uh, legal proceedings at some time, so you can understand <coughs> that we don't want to prejudice anything that might 
in due course go to court. Now, I'm not saying it will go to court, but we need to just get to the bottom of what has and hasn't happened, uh, talk to the people concerned. Uh, there may be um, a simple solution, but if needs be, we will get to the bottom of it and we will try to recover any monies that's due to Port Vale. So that's really my update on the specifics of, of where we are. Um, I hope that we'll be able to say more to you um, shortly after Easter, I think it's likely to be, when we can put out a proposal to creditors, naming our preferred bidder and putting that proposal to the creditors meeting. Um, I'd like to just convey my thanks to, to Mickey Adams, who can't be here tonight, uh, and to the players. Um, whilst Mickey can be a little prickly at times, as I'm sure everybody <laughs> recognises, um, you know, it's been a pretty tough time for him as well. Um, I've assured him that he'll be keeping his, uh, his coaches and his playing staff, other than Lee Collins, who we've had to let go for financial reasons. Um, the Sentinel did get it wrong when it said that we were uh, touting all of the players around the country. That wasn't the case. I believe that we need all the existing playing staff for, for the rest of the season. Um, I'd like to echo Gerald's thanks to Joan Wally. Uh, Joan has been far more influential than most people realise in A, um, helping the club get to where it is now and long term protecting the club through the medium of administration uh, with her help with Stoke City Council. Um, Joan sent her apologies this evening. She was intending to be here but she's been poor and she's picked up a virus and she hasn't been able to get uh, back from London this evening, but she wishes uh, everybody well, and I know she's encouraged by the way things are going. Right, I'll pass back over to Gerald. <coughs> uh, before I move on with the time log of where we're going, I just want to make two comments about the bidding. I've got a couple of emails here from the Sentinel's web that I think you might like to hear. The first one is, there has been much speculation over the identity of the mysterious unnamed bidder for the veil. Having thought about this for a while, may I offer my guess as to who it may be? My thoughts about this, and it is only a thought you understand, is that it may be Robbie Williams. <laughs> the second email on the same web another fantastic photo of Bob Young <laughs> joking aside the more I hear from Bob Young the more I'm impressed with his professional attitude philosophy and dealings with the press Bob Young you are fast becoming a legend of male power <laughs> You put in a bit for the <laughs> Question mark. If that person's I, in the room, I'll buy them a mic. <laughs> I've been asked to say that neither Robbie Williams nor Bob Young are one of the potential bidders, just to put the record straight. I'd just like to, before I move on as well, just comment on the bidding because it's not as straightforward as you might think. There are three or four aspects to the bid that we've asked these people to consider. And in no particular order, the first aspect surrounds the ground, which as you know, is heavily mortgaged to the council for 1.8 million pounds. So any bidder has to put forward a proposal what they wish to do as regards the ground. <coughs> The second part of the bid concerns the football club itself and the position of football creditors. As you're aware, football creditors have to be paid in full for reasons I'm going to come on to. And the third part of the bid is what they are offering for what is known as a company voluntary arrangement. So any bidder has got three areas that they've got to consider. And we've, we've tried to explain this as far as possible to everyone, so that when we get bids in, we're comparing like for like. Nobody's just bidding a global figure to buy the club. It doesn't work that way. Hence the time it's taken us to 
to consider all this. Now, Bob has told you that Monday lunchtime we're hoping to close the bids. We will then examine them over Monday and Tuesday, and it will be up to the joint administrators to recommend a preferred bidder. In conjunction with nominating the preferred bidder, we have to keep the council informed, number one, because of the funding agreement, but number two also because they are a secure creditor. And they have certain rights that we cannot override. We cannot just wipe out their mortgage if, because it suits us. We have to come to a commercial agreement. If we get an agreed preferred bidder next week, which we hope we will, bear in mind it's a short week with Easter coming up, we will put out a press release so that at least the fans and others will know that we're one step further along the line to saving the club. If you don't see an announcement, don't be pessimistic. It just means we wait until after Easter. We will be sending out to all the creditors, and remember, anybody who is a season ticket holder is a creditor in the administration, a package of papers which are highly technical, rather complicated, and they will be going out, I believe, hopefully, the Tuesday after Easter. We are convening a meeting of creditors and shareholders towards the end of April, and notice of that meeting will be in the package that is sent out. The purpose of that meeting is to consider the proposals that we are putting forward, principally for a company voluntary arrangement. And the reason we have to do this is we have already lost 10 points this season. I believe we are just about safe from relegation, but not guaranteed. If, however, we do not exit the administration through a company voluntary arrangement, the Football League will deduct between 15 and 20 points off us, which will put us way in the relegation zone and mean we're not in the Football League. Once again, I will put my neck on the block and say to you all, if we get a preferred bidder, I believe not only will we be in Division 2 next season, there will be no further penalty point deduction. I do believe that we have the votes necessary to get through our proposals, but we will need the support of the creditors who are season ticket holders. And what we're going to do is discuss it with your representatives and they will talk to you about it as and when the paperwork goes out. Because you can come to the meeting with pleasure, but you have to fill in certain paperwork to be able to vote. I am therefore assuming that the CBA will be approved by the end of April. At that stage, we enter into the CBA, and it is up to the proposed purchaser to satisfy the Football League, not only that they are fit and proper persons, and that's quite an interesting discussion we could have all night, but I'm not going to. 